Happy Thumbs Gaming. We shall. Hey everybody, it's Brian with Happy Thumbs Gaming. Today we're checking out level 5, Isla de Muerta. Free play for Lego Pirates of the Caribbean. I apologize if I slaughtered that name. It happens from time to time. Uh, although we do get all eight compass items and ten mini kits, so hopefully that makes up for any slaughtering of the words. All right, so we're going to show you real quick. You're going to want Cursed Jack, Serena. You're also going to want Marty, a uh, female character. It's always good to have Blackbeard with you as well. And, uh, yeah, so we highly suggest you have completed the story mode already. And if you're familiar with our series, then you probably already know that we have timeline fast forward links down below in the video description helping you get to each of the mini kits faster and each of the compass items faster so if you're here for one or the other uh, you can click those and skip any of the story or in between stuff but uh, moving right along mini kit number one can be found right at the beginning you're gonna pull Marty out and blast the silver chain on the boat and you can see the mini kit out there just kind of hanging out out there this is kind of a tricky jump make sure you go buy it and then jump back towards it uh, otherwise you might be out there jumping quite a bit and the sharks will get ya but hey you can yield yourself a trophy achievement for here there be monsters if you haven't already also use the compass right off the bat and find that golden trident we've already uh, blasted through it in the video we're almost behind now good thing it takes me forever to kill this parrot over here so I can catch up now, mini kit number three. Well, why are you? Why is number three? What happened to number two? Well, we're not going to count these parrots until we get all three of them. So we do get a mini kit in between. Um, and again, each of those three parrots can be found easily in the timeline description quick links. Uh, just go down there and look down there, and you can see all three of the parrots will be there. So mini kit number three, there will be three links. So uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, throw. The trident up there you could use wills uh, axe you could shoot it whatever once you do that it'll drop down some lily pads or something of that nature and also uh, give us access to a mini kit out there we're gonna check a female out whichever one you want go right by the double jump area and get out there on that lily pad little box area and jump up for mini kit number two so look at that, we're moving right along. So uh, as you may have guessed, the next mini kit we get is actually for getting all the parrots. So that's that's nice. Oh yeah. All right. Well, we're gonna bust some things open, and then here we're gonna get Jack over by using Jack's special little rope pulley. And once they're both over here, just jump up and hang on the rope, and it'll uh, advance us into the next part of the story. Now this part's a little tricky, and uh, I did speed it up a little bit if you haven't noticed already. Most of our videos are sped up a little bit, some parts more than other, but I promise you'll never miss anything along the way. We always document, note everything, so uh, although it may be faster and a little uncomfortable at first, I promise you it, you'll get used to it and you'll save time. Now you got to kill the guys inside the light here. I was having troubles. I knew what I was doing. I just had troubles lining him up because he kept getting squirrely left and right, but I eventually get him. Look at all them studs. We are rocking a 24 times multiplier. If you're wondering how we got it, it's from the red hats that you can find scattered throughout the hub, the port hub. We'll have a video up for that if it's not already available for you. And we'll go ahead and spin that wheel and take our other character across the way and smash and collect all that studage over there. And then we'll spin the wheel again to bring up the other bridge. And this time there's actually a parrot over here in the corner. So this is number two of three. So, boy, I'm having a hard time taking these parrots out. Tell you what, I'd be a bad parrot abuser if I ever had one. I guess that's a good thing. I don't know. Uh, we did use the torch from across the uh, first bridge area there, and we lit the cannon that's in the corner, and we're going to shoot these three X marks the spots on the rocks. Oh, yeah. Tumbling, tumbling. All right. It'll eventually give us a path. We can destroy all the little coins and whatever that is in front of us that gives us studs. And make your way up the path, and right off the bat, as soon as you get started up the hill, you can see on the left-hand side, there's the third and final parrot. So go ahead and smack him right in the chops. Pow! Right in the kissa. And then off in the back left, you'll see the mini kit spinning around. All right. Three in the bag now, and we'll come back to the compass point and pull out our compass for an immediate compass item retrieval. Booyah. Two in the bag now. We'll go ahead and use this copper, golden, whatever, reflector, and we'll go ahead and slap it on there. We'll push this about where we think it needs to be. It's a little short. I could have done better there. And we'll bust up everything we can around here. Fill that back up. And okay, so now you got to keep, uh, you got to dig up some stuff and then keep building. 
Once you build that whole box, which happens to be like a portable lantern of some sort, and place it right where it's supposed to go, it'll shine that shiny brightness and get it all aimed and hit that skull. And if you're looking for in-depth in uh, how, to, how to to beat this level, feel free to check out our story mode walkthrough. We have a video for that as well. Every level has a story and a free play. Once you get into the fight area with Barbosa, you're going to use your compass right off the bat on the right-hand side, and you will find a, uh, a big old box full of masks. I recommend you don't put it on because it's a little obnoxious. Then head over to the far right side and use the compass, and you'll pull up a fish. Fishy, fishy. And then we will walk. That one's actually taking us to a spot we have not unlocked yet, so we'll come back to that here in a second. And essentially, you got to take Barbosa, and he's kind of the opposite. He's invincible in the light, and you can hurt him in the dark. So try to get him in the darkness and smack him around a bit, and it'll work a heart or two off. And then uh, he'll send out a bunch of guys in certain waves, and these guys can only be killed in the light. So it's a little bit tricky. Hey, what's up, Thumby? There's one of the characters that I was talking about. If you want to get your own Lego character likeness, click the link down below. And uh, the artist will take care of you. He's a good guy, and uh, he works relatively reasonable rates. By re relatively reasonable, I mean cheap. All right, so go ahead and roll up the uh, bone roller coaster here. Roll it until Barbosa drops down. He'll come attack you and try to get him off into the darkness. Yeah, buddy. All right, and then we're going to draw all of the baddies over here onto the left-hand side now. If you're wondering why we're just standing in the corner, it's because we're going to try to draw them into the light as much as possible so that when we attack them, they'll be in the light. So here we go. We'll go stand back there. I got a little antsy. Otherwise, uh, my theory would have proved to be true. Now, remember, you got to kill these guys in the light. And even though I just threw that guy out, he's still respawning and coming back. So happens to be Bosun, huh? Get out of here, Bosun. All right, once they're all dead, use them bones, them bones to build the wall. Then climb them bones, them bones. All right, make your way over. Push in the two boxes, which will then make the scene go crazy. And Barbosa will come out and try to get another stab at you. Make sure you attack him in the dark. He wasn't. He was trying to hang out in the light. No, sir. No, sir. All right, and then once we... Uh, Knock him. He'll head back up and send another wave of dudes. Oh, yeah. Make sure you take him out. Oh, this one's a little trickier. They got a guy throwing bombs. Bomb, 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 bomb. But uh, I got lucky there. I got him right on the edge of the light. Go ahead and take them all out. And then use Will's axe to go ahead, or anybody that shoots anything, really, and take the target out. This will get you up on the level above. And you can push in the other two boxes on the checkerboards. And this will actually cue us and show us some glowing, I don't know, pillars, poles, something. We'll call them pillars. Teeth, fossils, bars. I don't know. Take your pick. And uh, we'll go ahead and switch to Serena. You could use Philip, I suppose, as well. He might not work as well just due to the fact you have to go underwater, so Serena's probably the best bet. And you do get Serena for completing the uh, story mode, so it shouldn't cost you nothing. And once you get in here, you're going to want to switch to Cursed Jack. So you're wondering why we needed Cursed Jack. Well, here you go. You need the compass, and you need to be underwater. And we'll go ahead and queue that up and follow it on over to the fifth item, which happens to be uh, in the corner over here. Oh, yeah. Five of eight. We're almost there, people. Almost done with the first film, if you're following along. That's pretty awesome. All right, so the compass item is a kind of an old Trojan helmet. You're going to pick it up and actually bring it back and stuff it on this statue. Nope, don't throw it on the side of it. Put it on top, and he'll raise up with pride and drop a mini kit for us. So that's nice, a little double whammy. Now, this is a little tricky. There's a little cubby hole right there. Yeah, you might have to go back and rewind it. There's a cubby hole that you can swim through, and it takes you to a far left side. So now we're in the far left, and we're going to pull out our compass and follow it on over to a box with a handle. And this is where Mr. Bo Sun comes in handy because uh, Curse Jack, I don't believe, can do it. I suppose he might be able to, but pretty sure you need Bo Sun to lift that up. Go, son. Go, son. And inside is a mini kit. So pretty awesome. Another two for one. A compass item that leads to a mini kit. Now we're going to swim back up to the top here. I guess we haven't seen the top of this area, but we're, gonna, we're on the far left area up top. 
And there is a mini kit right up above us. You can see it spinning in the top right corner of your screen. And to get it, we got to come over here and take this target out and then work our way up the boat and then slide down a chain. It's pretty easy if you know what you're doing. Uh, if you don't know what's there, though, it's easy to miss. This jump was a little suspect, too. I couldn't. I had a hard time with this double jump. Like, it's almost a double jump, and I'm trying to hit double jump, but you simply push jump once, and he'll get up there. So I was going to do a rough edit right here, uh, but I switched characters here in a second, and uh, it ended up being a really rough edit. So it would have been looked really weird climbing up as Will, and then all of a sudden uh, you make it to the top, and you're Jack Sparrow. So I left that little uh, hoody hoo in there. But you can see, Booyaka Shao, you slide across. And there you go, mini kit number six in the bag. All right, far right side of the pier, there is a box. And inside the box, we'll have to figure out what it is by using Blackbeard. It's a bunch of pieces. Oh, it's a cannon. Oh, let's build that cannon with our super awesome telekinesis. And then we need the torch. Conveniently, there's one random torch on the side of a canyon wall here in the back. And we'll go ahead and pull that out and put it to good use. Rubber ducky, you're the one. All right, so this is a little weird here. I hit this rubber ducky like 18 times, and he doesn't go away. Well, I haven't hit him yet. But all right, so here we go. Let the destruction of this ducky begin. Look at that. He's invincible. Something's not right here. Ironically, I go ahead and blast the other ones, and I get the mini kit. And then when I pull out, which we don't usually recommend, but uh, when you do pull out, you make it over there, and there's no ducky floating in the water. So it's a little ducky to me, if you know what I'm saying. A little ducky. All right. So there you can see I was having a little trouble with the depth perception there. And now we're back on the scene, and we need to actually switch. Uh, we should be switching over to Cursed Jack so we can make it back over. We need to... Sneak on back over into the left side, not the far left side. So we got to go right one area by going down and below. We're a little confused here. <laughs> Look at our AI just run circles around us. Wee! They're just as confused as we are. All right, so we got Cursed Jack. We're going to head back through the crevasse. Ready? All right, yeah, that's kind of a little confusing. There it is over there, little hole. Okay. Now we pop out, and we're actually going to use the compass. And it confuses us. So this is one of those rare compass items that we might actually be able to help you on rather than just walking right to it. But essentially, uh, we'll come back to that compass item after we grab this mini kit. Because it is right here. But we might as well knock out this color fest real quick. So pretty simple. When it shows red, match it with the two red skulls. When it shows blue, match it with the two blue skulls. And when it shows yellow, match it with the two yellow skulls. Now in the end... There is a whole nother session, and they're a little bit of mix and matching, but we got you covered here. It's pretty simple. You should know your primary color mixing anyways, but hey, you might be of the younger nature, and we're here to help. So next is green, and yellow and blue make green. That's a Ziploc commercial right there. And the next one is going to be purple, even though it looks a little blue on my screen. We know it's purple, so red and blue are going to mix together to make purple. And then I shouldn't have skipped that, or I shouldn't have moved that one. I, I should have just left it red. But yellow and red make orange. So once you complete the second wave, you can jump up and grab that mini kit. All right, so this is where it gets a little tricky. You're going to want to pull out your compass and follow it over here. That's easy. But if you don't know where to pull the compass out or where it is, it's a nightmare. Trust me. Uh, once you find it, you'll go ahead and jump up, and it'll actually, uh, once you pull the rope, it, the wolf there will howl or whatever. The doggy dog will give you a mini kit. So now we're going to move back across because uh, there's not a whole lot left over here. You can see we've only got one compass item left, which actually happens to be in this room on the floor. We will come back to this, but it's not available until we go and free a guy on the right side. So... Um, we are just double checking to see where this compass item was because like I said, it is a nightmare. These last two, crazy, crazy difficult. You pull out the compass finder and it tells you to go the wrong way and yada yada. So, all right, so you make your way through here. You can see we're still fighting Barbosa. We haven't killed him. If you kill him, it ends the, the mission. So make sure you don't do that. I should most certainly mention that. But there, right behind the, where we found the first compass item in the here, there is another glowing area that you can get through. As you just saw me sneak through, use Serena or Philip. Either one should work. And then inside, blast the silver box with Marty. 
and you'll see there's a guy standing here. Now, it's important. Grab the shovel. See the shovel on the ground right next to him? Grab it because you don't want to have to run all the way over there and then all the way back like I do. Learn from my mistake here, people. So you're going to want to swim back over with the shovel. So I missed that part. So I'm going to go over right now, and I'm going to use the compass. I would have edited it out, but I wanted to show you me finding the compass point. So now here we are. Just a second ago we were here, and you couldn't find it. Now there it is. So look at that. We'll go ahead and find the point, and there it's sitting right there, but we need a shovel to dig it up. So we did have a custom character that had a shovel, but we wanted to keep it legit. We want you to make sure that you can do it on your own without any specialties. And we try to tell you everything you need in the beginning of the mission, which we told you needed to curse Jack to do all this stuff. So, you know, we should have told you you needed a shovel, too, if that was the case. But we didn't because you got one right here. Now come back over and dig that puppy up. And then it's important that you grab it because although we've obtained the compass point, we don't have the item, and it kind of blends in with the ground there. So make sure that you pick up the compass point, or the, the spyglass, even if you got the compass point, and then make it all the way over here, and then hand it to Buddy, and guess what? He's a nice guy. He really is. He gives us the 10th mini kit. Oh, yeah. All right, so that actually wraps up all the collectibles. As you know, we already got all of the... Uh, compass items that was the last one that we just handed him and kind of the last three were kind of almost uh three for one i guess not the last three we did do the color mixing too my bad i don't know what i'm talking about so uh we will go ahead and complete the rest of this area we did speed it up a little bit more than usual because uh we assume that you've already beaten this and that you know what to do and it's just basically a little the rest of the mini boss battle with barbosa and a couple of studs and some dropping rocks along the way but uh yeah feel free to uh you know Scroll ahead and go to the next video if you want, or, you know, comment, vote, subscribe down below. We uh, appreciate that, so uh, we'll come back to that, though, in just a second. If you are trying to figure out how to beat this, it's important to know you got to pick up a coconut and then throw it at Barbosa, which will then cause stars around him. Once he has the stars, you go up and swing at him, but more than likely the monkey will jump on you before you can swing at him, and then you have to switch characters and then rinse and repeat and blah, blah, blah. All right, well, here we are. We're at the total screen. The moment of truth. Did we get them all? Of course we did. We just showed you. All right, that'll wrap up Lego Pirates of the Caribbean Level 5. Isla de Muerta. Free play. And look at that. Four, five, six, seven, eight compass items. And all ten of the mini kits. And we did it for you and for us and for that glorious platinum trophy. So what do you guys think? Uh, is this all worth it? The uh, gold bricks, we're pretty much almost to the halfway point. Two more and we'll be over the hump, huh? And uh, that's good. So let us know if you found this entertaining, if you found this informational, if you just like listening to my voice, whichever the case may be, head on over to Facebook, Twitter, or, you know, comment, vote, subscribe, as I already mentioned down below. Uh, if you like the video, please give us a like. If it sucks and annoyed you, please give us a dislike, but also give us the credit and enough respect to go ahead and tell us what we did wrong and how we can improve. Because, look, if we suck, we want to know so we can make it better. And uh, with that being said, we'll go ahead and uh, direct you over to happythumbsgaming.com right before we tell you, until next time. So, yeah.